Hi everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, this webinar is going to be uh, covering how to overcome organizational silos uh, using integrated technologies and automated business processes. Uh, and with us, we have a couple guests. Myself, uh, Guillaume Sanav, I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Business Development here at 3C Logic. But with us, we also have some very distinguished uh, members of the FAE Business Systems Group, uh, Jesse Heller and John Haar. Jesse, John, how are you guys doing? Hey, how you doing, Guillaume? Doing well. Jesse, uh, maybe you want to give uh, just spend 10 seconds on your background, and John, uh, you as well? Yeah, uh, I'm Jesse. I'm the Marketing Director at Faye Business Systems Group, and uh, we are a uh, 3C Logic partner and also most well-known in the Sugar CRM partner community. John? Hi, uh, my name is John Haar. I am a Project Manager and Sugar Consultant with Faye Business Systems Group. I've got a background in application development, and I also teach a class on Sugar University about advanced workflows. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for joining us today here, guys. And, and to all those that are joining our webinar, thank you for taking time out of your uh, very busy schedules uh, to hear uh, what we have to say. Again, today we're going to talk about how to really uh, get around uh, the traditional organizational silos that uh, almost all enterprise, or, or you know, regardless really of the size of the organizations, typically have. Uh, but with that, uh, before we dive into some of the answers to how you can sort of uh, optimize uh, the communication and collaboration uh, within your institution as well as with your respective customers, I thought it might help to get a little bit of background in terms of where things stand uh, and why this is an ongoing issue. So first and foremost, uh, you know, from 10,000 feet, uh, the uh, most important thing to recognize is that for all intents and purposes, the customer experience model uh, in its current format uh, despite all the technology, uh, all the platforms, and, and all the best efforts uh, made out there, is for all intents and purposes uh, effectively broken. Uh, and you can see this in a, in a Forrester a study that was taken that took place uh, very recently, uh, in which 80% of uh, companies that were surveyed uh, believe that they actually, in their uh, current um, uh, customer initiatives, already provide a superior customer service. And yet, if you uh, query their customer base, only 8% of those respective customers actually agree. So there's actually a huge gap uh, in terms of, of perception, perceived perception in regards to the customer experience organizations think they're offering uh, and then how it's otherwise uh, gauged by uh, the recipients of that service. And once that's created is, um, is uh, what's uh, uh, very uh, casually called the switching economy, which, is, uh, which has swelled. Uh, up to 1.6 trillion since uh, early measurements in 2010. And what the switching economy applies to or really refers to um, is basically uh, free money uh, with that, that's floating between uh, vendors. So for all intents and purposes, customers that have left one institution uh, largely due to poor customer experience uh, and is in, uh, is in search for a vendor that can actually help provide the level of service that they've otherwise uh, would have expected with their prior vendor. So in some cases, this really highlights uh, the size of the issue uh, in a, from a monetary sense, but also it also elaborates on the uh, potential opportunity for those organizations that really want to uh, put uh, a little bit more time and effort into uh, their customer experience initiatives uh, and potentially uh, uh, this could be the, uh, the pot, uh, the gold pot at the end of the rainbow if done correctly. Now, at a basic level, typically the, the biggest issue is that most customer journeys today are, are quite static. Uh, so what happens is, for all intents and purposes, a customer may uh, reach out to an organization, uh, let's say by telephone. They might get presented with uh, an IVR, which is really a fancy term for uh, a menu prompt for do they want one for sales, two for support, uh, three if they have an existing account. Uh, you know, it varies from one company to the next. But depending on their selection, typically that'll be the only criteria uh, under which they then get forwarded to one team or one representative. Uh, and of course, uh, as a recipient of that, uh, of that customer engagement, the representative typically doesn't really know who is calling uh, or for that matter why. Uh, and so there's not really an opportunity to, to start the customer engagement on, on a strong footing. Uh, and of course, as customers, we typically expect organizations to already know who we are, why we might be calling, uh, and potentially already have a resolution to our incoming inquiry. So there's a disconnect between uh, be the current static customer journey uh, and the intelligent one that, uh, as a customer, uh, we might otherwise hope organizations would provide. 
But really, part of the issue gets compounded uh, when you look at uh, what's actually happening behind the curtain. Uh, everyone is familiar with CRMs. Uh, we're going to talk at length about the value and benefits of using Sugar CRM, uh, and obviously the uh, the value that a company like Faye Business Systems can bring to the table with regards to their expertise on how you can optimize a CRM. But in most cases, customer relationship management tools were designed to act as a central repository, a system of record uh, where everyone could consult on uh, different data points around a customer, case, an incident, an opportunity, whatever the case may be. Uh, but the sort of issue with CRMs today is that most CRMs are only as accurate as uh, the, the individuals using them, uh, and unfortunately still very manual. So the accuracy of a CRM is only uh, is, is heavily correlated to uh, how effective uh, an organization and its respective employees are at actually inputting that information uh, in real time uh, in regards to different customer interactions, engagements, uh, next steps, and so forth. And yet, if you look at uh, recent statistics, only 10% of all customer engagements are actually entered successfully into uh, a centralized uh, relationship management tool, which means that 90% of the time when you're calling in, uh, agents just simply don't have the information that the, you would expect them to have to help resolve uh, whatever your issue inquiry might be. Uh, and that lends, obviously, to the disconnect between uh, you know, what the level of customer experience that we as customers might hope for and, obviously, the level of customer service that we are otherwise provided uh, from the, those respective institutions. And the other issue, of course, is that uh, most organizations today operate in silos. In fact, uh, the majority or, or, or more than half uh, will actually state that their biggest challenge uh, to offering a superior customer experience has to do with the gap that exists between uh, different teams when it comes to customer service, collaboration, coordination, as well as resolution. And typically that's going to be because each department tends to have its own tool. Uh, a sales team might have a, a, a CRM tool like Schroeder CRM. Uh, a marketing team might be using something like HubSpot or Marketo. Uh, a billing department might be using something like uh, Intact uh, or QuickBooks. Uh, and of course, at the department level, extremely useful, certainly helps optimize um, the efficiency of that team uh, within the scope of their specific mission statement. But of course, when someone calls in uh, for assistance, they may actually require uh, an agent to have access to different data sets that go outside of an individual department. Um, and so this is what causes uh, some hurdles in being able to, one, provide the tools and data that will allow your agents to be successful, but at the same time also uh, enhances the level of frustration that typically customers have whenever they're faced with, uh, with uh, having to interact directly uh, with uh, a vendor or an organization. So then the obvious question is, you know, where do you start? How can you respond? Uh, to these issues uh, and, and obviously the, the hurdles that organizational silos uh, typically bring or add to the equation. So with that, uh, what I thought I'd do is maybe pass it on to Jesse uh, and have him uh, provide some uh, framework on what would be some early things that you could do to help address some of these items and, and potentially create a competitive advantage for yourself. Jesse? Great. Thanks, Guillaume. So, uh, Moving on, we're talking about organizational silos today, and this is the concept that Shade Business Systems Group has pretty much built uh, our entire business on. Um, we've, we focus on Sugar CRM. That's the, uh, our core product that we innovate and develop for. Um, the idea is CRM in general as the central hub of the organization, but since we're a Sugar CRM shop, uh, there's reasons why we, we're going to be focusing on sugar, and it just briefly and quickly, it's just uh, extremely flexible uh, for you to be able to, to actually automate a lot of the manual stuff that's, you know, where there's a, there's a huge drop-off. Um, so we've built a suite. So we're not just a, you know, just a reseller of, of sugar. We've actually built a suite of products that are integrations uh, with Sugar from uh, ERP platforms like NetSuite um, and Sage and QuickBooks uh, to cloud document platforms and Box and Dropbox, et cetera. Uh, and as, as you may know, 3C Logic also exists with their Sugar integration, which we think is uh, 
you know, just amazing as far as breaking down these organizational silos. And that's really what we do. Um, it's the point of everything that we create. Uh, and, you know, doing any kind of call campaign, your integrated communications platform, or billing, sales, marketing, support, or operations, without an integrated CRM, we use this analogy. It's, it's kind of like fishing for tuna with a big net catching a thousand fish, having no idea which fish are edible, which fish are toxic, uh, or not even knowing if the fish are really tuna, which we always say it sounds like a recipe for going hungry. So the point is that CRM without an integrated strategy, it's the definition of controlled chaos, and it's the quickest way you can fix this foundation or a plague of uh, having a silos within your organization with, with, with software. Uh, it couldn't be a more inefficient way to achieve organizational success. Uh, so integrating systems with your CRM, it's that first step in the right direction toward getting all the teams in your organization the visibility they need to ensure operational success. Um, with all the information that's coming in and out of your call center platform, your integrated communications platform, ERP systems, or cloud document platforms, et cetera, there's absolutely no reason that all of the data shouldn't be accessible by everyone within an organization. Uh, the hub of the organization means that all customers, all customer-related data flows into the CRM software information about leads, customers, and critical data sources for all human and digital touch points during customer engagement needs to be in one repository. So, you know, software that stands alone, as we know, it can result in silos, redundant data entry, duplication of effort, sounding uninformed, and just tons of unintended errors, um, which just leads to overall unhappy people, and it sounds terrible. But when you're integrating software, you're bringing the software and the people together. Um, our clients integrate Sugar with everything that they can. Uh, we have standalone products, but we're building integrations all the time for custom, custom solutions that people are currently using. And as a result, our clients see fewer errors and greater productivity. They have faster access to data, streamlined operations and overall happier people, uh, which we think sounds pretty good. So let's move on to um, the next portion. We're going to look at this, this, this slide here about this fail rate of CRM initiatives. You know, Guillaume, you mentioned how much manual entry happens uh, and how we're, an organization relies on that manual data, and part of that is what leads to this high uh, fail rate of CRM initiatives. Um, more often than not, people, most people just don't see a reason to use software unless it's in their personal best interest. Uh, many times there's also a disconnect between CRM and your back office, uh, which means that many companies purchase their CRM and other applications from what we call best of breed vendors due to specific business requirements, which pos uh, potentially results in the CRM system lacking visibility uh, into the back office or transaction history, for example, in the case of like an ERP integration. Um, but successful software use, it looks, you know, it's the promise of a 360 degree view of a customer. That's what CRM is. Um, we're talking about breaking down organizational silos and that's the name of the game. When you're integrating your software, you're making your job easier, your performance is better, and then this successful use, when everyone sees the benefits, it generates that user adoption, and that can really put your organization in the right direction. Um, you know, we say that CRM systems are primarily designed to bring customer data from across the company and translate that into meaningful intelligence, and that's why we say the promise of CRM is one that's a 360 degree view uh, of a customer. So now we're going to talk about why we integrate. So let's, let's discuss sugar. So we love sugar for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the key reasons, like I mentioned, it's the flexibility and customizability and capability to be integrated with 
many different third-party solutions, and not all CRMs are, are, are like that, are treated the same when it comes to that. If you want your team to use a CRM software, you need to give them good reasons. And one good reason is, hey, you can integrate it with your existing software. Uh, over the long term, companies that are that are integrating uh, the capabilities they can expect significantly will decrease admin costs, increase customer satisfaction, revenue, and build sustainable competitive advantages in an increasingly challenging marketplace. Um, and I can talk all day long about our dozens of sugar integrations we've built and how you can have the full functionality of them inside your CRM. Um, and I'm happy to, to do that at another time one-on-one -on -one with anybody that would like to reach out to us to discuss it. And um, we can do that at any time. Um, in a bit, uh, John is going to show us um, how you can use Sugar's advanced workflow capabilities to actually automate key business processes. But before we get to that, uh, we want to have uh, Guillaume kind of bring us back to uh, the relevant channels aspect of this. So, Guillaume? Yeah, thanks, Jesse. So, all, all good points and relevant. So, I totally agree that uh, ultimately uh, having a centralized database and using a CRM like Sugar CRM to do so is, is really step one towards trying to at least uh, optimize how information flows <clears throat> within an organization between its respective departments. Uh, as well as between the organization and its and its uh, respective customers. Of course, one of the challenges today is that uh, not everyone communicates via the same channel anymore. Uh, and this is certainly the field that 3C Logic plays in, which is uh, multi-channel communication, CTIs, uh, call centers in general. Uh, and you have but to look at sort of what was the um, communication or channel of preference back in 2012 and, and look how uh, how the diversification has taken place over that uh, over a couple of years time since. So in the past, obviously uh, telephony was was a, a primary channel. It still remains a primary channel today, although it's becoming more of an escalation uh, channel as opposed to a, a de facto. Uh, and that's given and that's largely due to the fact that now you have um, channels like Twitter, SMS, uh, uh, voice cell service, uh, online messaging and chat that are starting to take over some of the burden uh, across different uh, uh, channel options that are now provided to the customer. And yet, of course, the challenge here is for the organization to be able to um, identify an individual regardless of which channel they choose uh, to communicate with, uh, and at the same time, knowing that those channels may be used uh, for different departments. As an example, um, you would expect chat and social media to typically be uh, associated with marketing, uh, telephony with customer service. Uh, and so on and so forth. And yet customers may not necessarily respect those divisions. Uh, and so the uh, challenge, of course, is being able to very quickly allow your agents to uh, move uh, from one role to the next, regardless of the fact that they might be doing it across different channels. Uh, and this isn't sort of a nice to have. This is largely becoming an expectation uh, from uh, the, uh, the customers that typically we all serve. So then obviously the next challenge is, okay, well then, then how does that play into the customer journey? We spoke earlier to the fact that typically the customer journey is very static uh, and that's also what lends to, to part of the uh, breakdown in customer experience uh, as a whole. Uh, and of course the, the fact that the majority of the challenges that most customer service teams face is the fact that there is uh, a gap uh, when it comes to customer service, a collaboration between departments and ultimately what allows uh, them to reach a resolution, uh, ultimately with the goal of uh, pleasantly uh, uh, pleasing the customer or surprising them, and obviously uh, in what is becoming an increasingly service-driven economy, uh, make sure that we retain them uh, as customers. And again, the CRM plays a very key role in this aspect because it helps sort of manage all the data flows that have to take place in order to facilitate those customer engagements. 3C Logic, from our perspective, uh, allows for the customer engagements across all channels to take place and allows those automated updates uh, to occur between the CRM uh, in real time. So again, each solution playing a very key role in what is otherwise a very complex network. And you have but to look at some of the challenges. I mean, uh, close to half of all customer service representatives today are actually unable to resolve customer issues because they're using multiple platforms that otherwise don't speak to each other. And that's why having at least one central database, like a Sugar CRM, act as sort of the, 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 the mothership 
from which all of the solutions uh, dip, to, dip into and play from uh, can help sort of uh, unify what is otherwise a common frustration uh, in, in call centers, customers help desk, sales teams, and so forth. And you know that's why typically as a customer when you call in, it's rare for you to get your issue resolved in the first try. In fact, more than half uh, typically don't uh, get resolved uh, on the first attempt, largely because information is not available to the agent uh, that would have been uh, available or helpful in resolving the inquiry. And a lot of it has to do, again, the majority of organizations actually attribute this to the silo mentality uh, that uh, uh, naturally seems to occur within most institutions. The exception being, of course, those that uh, do a very good job of, of, of creating a collaborative environment, not just among its people, but using software to facilitate that. Uh, they tend to be the exception, and, and, and by default, you see a correlation with uh, happy customers. And so uh, I'll pass the buck here to John uh, to maybe talk about uh, starting with Sugar CRM, if we treat it sort of as the central warehouse, how Sugar CRM can help with sort of the automation of those workflows and, and maintain that customer journey. John? Thank you, Guillaume. Uh, again, this is John. Um, so, Guillaume, you started with presenting us with a problem, um, talking about the organizational silos and having the trouble of trying to put together all the different pieces within your organization. And then, of course, Jesse came in and presented uh, possible solutions with 3C Logic, Sugar CRM, and then all the integrations that we have um, that we can you know, integrate with uh, Sugar CRM. So what I want to talk about is actually the advanced workflows that are in Sugar. So we're going to kind of pull back the curtain a little bit and look at how uh, how Sugar can uh, use these advanced workflows to help facilitate communications between your customers and your customer support group, your sales operations department. So we don't have just information sitting in one department or one group. So uh, Jim, if you could go on to the next slide. I don't know what we have. Okay, so uh, the Sugar Advance workflow is, is a toolkit, and it is made up of four main parts to it. So we have the business rules, we have email templates, process definitions, and the processes. And the business rules uh, is where you can actually define how your business functions. So let's say, for example, you have leads that come in, maybe you have cases that come in that have to be managed by specific people, maybe geographic location, maybe their expertise on the subject or whatever. And uh, the, the assignment of those cases or possibly sales leads is always going to go to those same people. So that would be a business rule. You can set up a business rule define what your process is and use it throughout uh, Sugar and throughout your workflows uh, to, to move your data to the correct department, the correct people. The email templates gives you an opportunity to set uh, some structure to the email communication. So you can have standard emails that go to other people within your organization or emails that communicate back to your customers. So you can, if a customer's entered a case or a support case, you can communicate with them using a standard email template and just tell them where their case is, um, if it's being resolved, when it might be resolved, if it's been assigned to somebody. And then process definitions, <clears throat> I'm actually going to show this in just a little bit, how it looks in Sugar, but the process definitions are really the heart of advanced workflows. And it's, it's a visual mapping of your business process. So you'll see that we can uh, lay out what the the workflow is going to be, we can move things around on the canvas, on the screen, and you can all, uh, as, a, as an organization, you can look and see what your uh, business process flow is. And then finally, the processes, we don't really get into this that much, but those are the actual uh, processes, that's what everybody interacts with. So whether it's, uh, whether it's a sales manager, whether it's somebody that's uh, on this uh, customer support team, that's a process is actually their interaction with uh, advanced workflows. So whether they have to review something, approve it, or reject it. So what I want to do is jump in and actually take a look in Sugar. So if you could, uh, Jesse, if you could make me the presenter here. Wait just a second. Show my screen. So this is an example of a <clears throat> workflow, an advanced workflow. And 
the idea here is that you have a customer support case, which is called case. We're using the cases module that's in Sugar. And something happens that causes this workflow to kick off. So for instance, maybe it's a new case, or maybe the status on the case changes. And let's say your organization needs to be able to uh, take certain cases and assign them to specific people. Um, it needs to be approved by somebody. And if that person that is assigned to it doesn't take some sort of action on it within a certain period of time, a set defined period of time, then you want to pass it on to somebody else. So you could kind of look at this as, um, as a, a customer support team that's got multiple tiers to it. So you come in at a low tier um, and you try to assign the case to, that, to somebody on that tier. If it doesn't re isn't resolved by that person, that it might move on to, to the next tier. So, and part of what the reason I want you to see how the advanced workflow works in Sugar is because I want you to see how easy it is. Now, this is not, this is not something that a regular user would see. This is something that an administrator or an advanced Sugar user uh, would set up. And by the way, this is actually the uh, what we focus on in our class in Trigger University and advanced workflows, we talk about what your business process is. We actually first analyze your business processes and then we translate that into process definitions. Uh, and so this is actually the result of something, this process definition will be the result of a, a lot of discussion, a lot of thought uh, internally, also with me, and to come to some sort of conclusion that looks like this. But you'll notice that you have this toolbar that's along the top, um, and each one of these is just simply an event. And you drag the event out onto your canvas, and you can give it further definition. So we won't go into specifics on each one of these, but just I want you to be aware that um, it's pretty easy to use. It's very visual. And once you've defined what your workflow process is, it's pretty easy to, to set everything up. So just kind of let's take a look at what's going on here. <clears throat> This is, a, this is an instance where we have a case. We can look at the settings on this particular case. Um, and it's not completely defined, but you can say this is a workflow that kicks off when there's a new case that was created. So support case, maybe something was updated, maybe the status changed. And we have two things that we want to have happen at the same time. So that's why you have this parallel flow in here. And you'll notice these arrows define how the flow goes. So all I simply do to create my flow process is just to connect those two nodes. Um, basically what we have going on is we've assigned this to this case to somebody to look at it, approve it, um, work on it, something, something like that. But we're waiting for this person. We've assigned it to them. At the same time that this is going on, we actually have a clock that's going right here. And you're able in advanced workflows to have to have some timing. So you can time how long it takes somebody to do something. This is very important, you know, when you're trying to improve, uh, you know, trying to improve that customer journey, trying to improve your customer experience. So if you want to give some sort of time frame around when you will re respond to them with, uh, with an answer, you can do that easily with uh, advanced workflows. So basically what this is doing is while we're sitting up here waiting for this person to approve it, we're sending them also a reminder. So let's say we've waited for a day, uh, probably wouldn't wait a day to get back to customer support, but uh, if a day goes by, you remind them, you increase the count, and then you go back until you've reached, let's say, three days. If at, at this point you reach three days and this person hasn't reviewed or approved it, then you would change the customer support person and move it on uh, in the next step of the flow so you can make sure that you're always on top of uh, your customer support. So this would be really handy to use in a case where you've got certain uh, business uh, processes in place that say, okay, we have to respond to our customers within X number of hours, um, otherwise we need to move it on to the next person. So it's a really easy way of using uh, advanced workflows. And I believe that is all I have and all, all I want to show on that at this time. So I'll send it back over to you, Guillaume. Great, John. Thank you. Let me uh, just take the uh, presenter rights back here. So, so I thought what you just uh, went through, John, was was actually quite helpful because obviously that allows uh, any organization to establish an automated process uh, that takes a lot of the manual work out 
of uh, what is typically expected of agents uh, and at the same time helps make sure that the customer journey remains intact and isn't always subject to someone remembering to do or, or, or activate uh, any specific item. And, and that plays very well in terms of the channels and, and the customer engagements that we spoke of because obviously your workflows are operating uh, continuously in the background um, but that doesn't mean that there's necessarily at each instance a customer interaction is taking place although there's obviously a customer uh, at some point or other expecting something to happen uh, whatever the steps might ha be that have to take place in the background uh, in order for, for that uh, inquiry or case or so forth to be resolved and for those uh, that are watching this webinar if you recall we had, we had mentioned how Typically, most customer journeys today are very static. You call in, for example, you're presented with a very basic prompt, uh, and that prompt is meant to just say, send you generically to a, 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 a group queue, uh, be it for support, for sales, or, or, or something of that matter. When in fact, what we would all would much rather have uh, to really help facilitate the customer experience is an intelligent customer journey mapping. And the way we can do that is basically leveraging the information, for example, the advanced workflows that John just uh, beautifully highlighted, uh, to help understand the uh, purpose for, let's say, the incoming inquiry. So uh, as opposed to someone just calling in and saying, I'm going to press 1 because I need someone from support, uh, what they can do is they can press 1 for support. And in the uh, 3C logic system, for example, can intelligently uh, uh, put that call on hold and in that instance uh, then uh, dip or consult sugar to the extent that even uh, it could even uh, dip into an advanced workflow uh, to understand what might be the potential inquiry? So for example, let's say someone were to call in, they have an existing case. Well, uh, depending on the status of that case, you might want to route the call to a specific individual or specific team that has the skill sets to either update the, the uh, customer on the status of that case or help address that case in real time. And ideally, you're trying to marry customer and agent uh, in the most efficient uh, and optimal way possible. And the only way to do that is to be able to dip into the information that would natively reside within, for example, a Sugar CRM. So the example here, of course, is once that consulting or that data dip has taken place, uh, to the extent that perhaps we're even uh, leveraging Sugar's own advanced workflows to intelligently understand uh, how the decision tree should uh, take place, uh, ultimately we come up with a conclusion, that conclusion being uh, this representative would be the appropriate and available individual to help field this call and at the same time present that representative with the Sugar information uh, or customer data that's going to actually allow them to not only anticipate the incoming call uh, and customer inquiry, but at the same time have all the relevant data uh, available that's going to help them resolve uh, that, that potential inquiry. So now we've taken the manual aspect out of the situation. We're also uh, unifying the different departments because now we're dipping into information that ideally is centralized uh, within Sugar. So this goes back to Jesse's earlier part where uh, they're able to do integrations with the likes of Intac, QuickBooks, uh, Dropbox, and so forth. Uh, but Sugar can be the primary housing unit where all that information is otherwise made available. And then we at 3C Logic can help uh, optimize the interactions as they take place in real time and map and match both customer and representative while presenting the information that's going to be relevant uh, for that call. And so now you're starting to break down organizational silos in such a way that now your representative is not just a glorified call center agent, uh, but they can potentially represent departments, be multifaceted, uh, and be able to at least uh, to some extent address questions that may be uh, uh, around operations, sales, uh, uh, logistics, billing, uh, perhaps even marketing questions. Perfect example there would be uh, social media, uh, typically a marketing tool, and yet obviously uh, 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 an avenue or a channel that most customers use to vent frustration. Well, a marketing team is typically not going to be the, the appropriate group uh, to field uh, customer complaints. That would typically be uh, or fall under a support uh, initiative. Uh, so obviously being able or having access to uh, uh, marketing uh, channels, social channels, but in a support aspect is very, very relevant. And that's something 3C Logic can absolutely do, uh, but only to the extent that we're able to also leverage a central database like Sugar CRM uh, and obviously the, the, um, the support uh, and expertise that a, a, a consulting firm and department like uh, FAE uh, Business Systems is able to provide. And then of course, you know, the idea is not just to facilitate the customer engagements, but also to be able to automate uh, the record keeping uh, so that the information is automatically updated in Sugar CRM. 
uh, again, trying to avoid that uh, very uh, uh, sad 10% uh, effectiveness rate when it comes to data entry in CRM and make it or, or get it as close to 100% as possible. And the way you can do that, which is obviously trying to mitigate the manual workloads uh, and replace them with uh, uh, automation, uh, is to, if we go back to the uh, customer journey mapping, is after we have successfully uh, initiated the call, for example, uh, understood whom the call should go to, presented to the agent, and the agent has successfully uh, fielded that call, uh, is also allow that information uh, and customer engagement to automatically then up, go back and update uh, the central database, in this case, Sugar CRM. Uh, and that can be in the form of uh, storing uh, each customer engagement, whether it's a call recording, uh, automatically storing status changes, uh, perhaps a case has gone from uh, issue escalated to issue resolved. If it's a lead, maybe it's gone from uh, marketing qualified to, to becoming a full uh, opportunity, in which case maybe it needs to get pushed to the sales team. But the idea is using those different workflows uh, uh, to, your, uh, to your benefit, but also allowing the customer engagements to then trigger what should happen next in an automated fashion. It's no longer left to human error or to the representatives to do so. The system can do it automatically as soon as an engagement is done. And that's something that 3C Logic, in, in conjunction with Sugar CRM and obviously Fade Business Systems, uh, is able to do uh, very, very well and has done so effectively for, for quite a number of customers. And you know, the conclusion being at that point, once you've sort of married these different softwares, these different platforms, workflows, uh, and map them to your specific uh, organization, uh, processes, uh, not necessarily uh, to how you do it today, but perhaps an opportunity to optimize how you might want to do it for tomorrow. Ultimately, at the end, now you actually have uh, multiple systems that are actually acting in tandem or in sync, regardless of the fact that it may require uh, data inputs from multiple sources or departments for that matter. Uh, and so, obviously, this is all very high-level stuff. Uh, each organization operates a little bit differently than the next. Uh, and that's where ourselves and Fay Business uh, Systems or uh, group can really help you uh, evaluate and analyze uh, how you operate today, what might be some opportunities for efficiency, uh, and then obviously get you closer to, to using customer experience as a, a competitive differentiator favorably, uh, and maybe uh, chipping away, allow you to chip away at that uh, switching economy that we alluded to uh, at the beginning of, of the presentation. So with that, I'll, I'll stop there. That they'll, they'll sort of mark the end of our presentation. Obviously, you may very well have a lot of questions, uh, either for ourselves, 3C Logic, or uh, for Fay Business Systems Group. Again, 3C Logic, we're a full cloud contact center solution. Uh, we uh, we uh, specialize in call centers, CTIs, help desks, uh, optimizing sales organizations, uh, really a multi-channel suite that really focuses on um, customer interactions and different channels uh, across which they occur. Uh, and then obviously, Fay Business Systems. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow uh, Jesse and, and John maybe to uh, to describe themselves and, and add a few last words. Yeah, thanks, Yom. So just as I mentioned, we're a um, we're a Sugar CRM partner. We specialize in uh, sh uh, sugar integrations uh, with ERP platforms and uh, productivity platforms, as well as uh, call center solutions. Um, and we focus on custom development as well. Uh, we have a lot of clients that are using software that are currently existing that they want to have communicate with their CRM, and uh, we're able to focus on that. And uh, we have, as well, John, who you know works with Sugar University. So on staff, we're considered you know uh, a training resource for CRM uh, successful use as well. Uh, we're based in LA. We've got offices in. Philly, Austin, Atlanta, and uh, that's essentially it. Give us a shout. Excellent. Well, thanks for that, guys, and thanks for joining us, and thanks again to all those that joined us today, and, and uh, we're interested in learning a little bit more, uh, not just about how to uh, uh, address organiz organizational silos, but obviously learning a little bit more about 3C Logic and FAE business systems. Uh, if you have any questions, you have our contact information uh, there on the screen. Feel free to reach out to ourselves or Fay Business Systems, uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, we'll all uh, gladly uh, lend you a hand and, and see uh, where we can uh, potentially uh, help optimize uh, your existing uh, business as it stands. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks.